Hey, buddies, I'm Potato McWhiskey, and welcome to a very nice little video about how to bring about the end of the world as the Mayan Empire. Now, the Mayan people are a little bit upset that the world didn't quite end like they predicted in 2020. Despite how crazy people went on social media, apparently the world still exists, much to everyone's disappointment in the years that have followed. So today we'll be playing Civilization VI in the Apocalypse game mode as the Maya in order to really bring about everyone's true desire, and that's for the world to burn in a hail of meteors. I would like to say thank you so much to Firaxis for sponsoring this video. There will be links in the description of the video if you want to go ahead and grab yourself the new Apocalypse game mode and get the new packs, the new saves, you want to get Maya and Grand Columbia and try to bring about the end of the world yourself. Now we're starting off in a very lush area of the world. We have some very nice river systems as well as some really nice high yield tiles with things like two food three production and two food two production, which are really ideal early game tiles. Now, one of the important things that we need to remember when we're playing the Maya is they don't actually get fresh water benefits. You can see here, if I turn on the settler map mode, which typically shows where you get fresh water with green, um, the whole world is just a gray canvas for the Maya to settle as they please. And I've also, I kind of had a little bit of a sort of brainstorm about what kind of strategy I wanted to employ as the Maya, like an opening strategy, because of course, one of their other bonuses is that they get negative penalties to cities that are settled six tiles or for, uh, I think it's more than six tiles away from their capital. So we want to ideally then build a good few cities, but not too many to try and take advantage of that 10% boost to yields that they have for cities that are within those six tiles of the capital city. Now ideally here I would have a luxury resource to settle beside but I think I'm okay with sacrificing that considering I have just such good tiles in my immediate vicinity so we're going to settle in place. And the particular strategy that I have in mind for the Mayans is I'm going to be going scout monument builder and I'm going to be immediately teching for Hulche. And the idea behind this strategy is that we get a scout so that we can a look around early. We get the early monument so that we can unlock early empire pretty quick and get our hands on the colonization civic. That'll allow us to actually build the few settlers that we need. The builder will allow us to improve things like the uh, rice over here and as well as maybe a couple of mine tiles, maybe a couple of pastures, stuff like that. And then by the time we have our very first scout, our very first monument and our very first builder, we'll probably be just about ready to unlock the Hulche. And then we'll quickly go ahead and grab craftsmanship so we can crack out a few Hulche so that we can have these really, really strong archer units to defend ourselves from the enemy. Oh, it looks like there has been a meteor strike in the fog of war over there. I'm going to go ahead and run over there and see if I can pick up what it dropped on the ground. Oh, very nice. We actually managed to bump into our ma. And we were the first person to meet them, netting us a nice plus two faith in the capital, which might mean that we can go for the settler pantheon and grab ourselves a really quick second city. Hello, Rome. We have managed to bump into the ever aggressive Rome. I'm going to send them a delegation because that's going to give me plus three relations with them, which will maybe push them in the direction of not wanting to cut my head off and display it on the walls of their capital. They're also attacking this barbarian encampment. So if I time my attack correctly and they attack again, I should be able to steal this from them. No problem. Oh, Rome, you silly fool. You just handed me a free encampment kill. Thank you. 30 gold and a Eureka just finished the monument boosting our culture per turn up to 3.8 next we're going to be getting to work on the builder so that we can improve this farm because don't forget we also get access to plus one housing and plus one gold from farm so we do want to keep these food resources around not only that but don't forget i think i talked about this all don't forget our observatories which is our unique campus replacement get plus two science for each adjacent plantation. So I'm going to be kind of mapping out where I think I'm going to be getting at least three adjacency on my observatories as sort of the locations that I want to build my empire around. And the reason we want to get plus four adjacency on these observatories and why we want to focus on observatories at all is because it costs us half as much production to build our observatories, which means we want to build them because we build them in half the amount of time, which means we get the same benefit for half as much production. But the main reason we want to get at least plus three adjacency is for this card here, Rationalism, which gives you a 50% science boost to all of the buildings inside an observatory, which is a unique version of the campus, 
if you have at least plus three adjacency. Also, if you can get 10 population, you get another 50%. So we're going to be able to generate an insane amount of signs from our cities if we can find the right places to place the observatories and grow our cities to 10 population. That is the entire underpinning strategy that we're going to be playing around today. The secondary strategy is we're going to be trying to get to the late game, burn as many fossil fuels as possible, fill the entire world with CO2, and watch meteors rain from the sky, destroying all civilizations. Ooh, brilliant. We actually ran into Gilgamesh. I'm going to go ahead and try to be friends with him. And this is a really important thing to note. If you're playing on standard speed and you meet Gilgamesh, you can go ahead and declare a friendship with him the very first turn you meet him, as well as send him a delegation. And you'll have a great relationship with him for basically the entire game. Never mind that one time that I was playing Germany and Gilgamesh immediately broke my friendship at his first opportunity and swarmed me with war card. Let's just not talk about that one. See, even Gilgamesh thinks I'm a good friend and ally. Little does he know that my plan is to entirely destroy a civilization with meteor strikes. Right now, we have three housing in the capital. If I go ahead and pop this farm down, we're going to get four housing, and that's because the Mayas get 1.5 housing per farm, which is a ridiculous amount of housing for a single tile improvement. If I also slap down this horse pasture, That'll go all the way up to five housing from just two improvements. It's insane how powerful this bonus is. Now, the downside is you don't get fresh water. But even so, I'm already starting to see the sort of plans of a city coming together. If I were to put an aqueduct here and an industrial zone here, eventually I could, for example, put my government plaza here as well. And now I've got a really nice string of districts all providing each other with really nice benefits. I could always harvest this quarry as well, just put a farm down here. And this will actually be, if I do the maths, a plus five total campus when I get it to the end game, which basically means if I multiply it by two, it's going to be a 10 adjacency campus. I really hope people are starting to see just why the civilization is so damn powerful. Now I have seven turns until I unlock archery, which will pretty much be the thing that prompts me to start building my hull chase just so I can hold off any aggression from the AI. Mm. Rome does not seem to approve of the fact that my empire is rather small. In fact, Rome is possibly one of the worst neighbors you could have as the Maya because Rome's goals are pretty much directly diametrically opposed to what the Mayas want to do. Rome wants to expand a lot and the Mayas want to have a relatively small, compact and efficient empire. Now we have picked up our Pantheon and the very first thing I'm going to be grabbing is a settler. I could have gone from culture from plantations, but I think getting the early settler is really important here because it's going to allow me to be way more aggressive. Now, the thing you have to remember as the Maya is you want to settle adjacent to luxuries and you want to settle in a way that leaves you open to being able to build really good cities. So for example, right here, I have two plantation resources right beside each other, and then I have room for two farms. So this could be another plus five adjacency observatory right here on the edge of my empire. And I think I'm going to go ahead and settle right here on this minus four loyalty tile because it'll provide me with a city that I can use in the defense against Rome's aggression. That will almost certainly come at some point this game. Time to improve our third improvement, giving us access to craftsmanship, which will allow me to plug in a GOG as well as Ilkum when the time comes. But for now, I'll leave urban planning in because we're mostly now powering hard for early empire. Like I said, time for us to settle our second city. And the thing about the Maya is they really struggle without a builder charge in their cities. So I think the very first thing we're going to be doing is starting work on a slinger to be able to defend the city, which will eventually become a whole J, which we are building 50% faster. And then I'm probably going to spend my gold on getting a builder in here to try to improve a couple of these tiles to get some extra farms in here. There is access to the Hulche, which is a ridiculously powerful unit. Not only does it have a baseline plus three more ranged combat strength than a regular archer, but it does five extra damage when fighting a wounded opponent, as well as the Mayan innate ability of plus five combat strength to all units within six tiles of the capital. And this is within six tiles of the capital, which means these units are basically like crossbowmen on the defense. If your enemy is wounded, you're doing on order of like 40 combat strength ranged strikes, which is insane when you consider that crossbowmen have 40 baseline range strength. Okay, this is a problem for me. Rome has decided to forward settle me, which means I pretty much have to go to war with them the second that this settler is finished. Hmm, it looks like Rome is actually getting ready to go to war with me. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase myself 
a Hulche if I can. Let's go ahead and siphon off gold from Gilgamesh. He already has horses, darn. Yeah, Rome is... Well, like I said, Rome decided that now is the moment to declare war. Thankfully, these Hulche do a stupid amount of damage, and I have units in position. My real question is, are you going to survive getting hit by four units? And I don't think you are, but if I retreat a tile, you will maybe bait them into attacking you slightly later. This really isn't the location that I would ideally settle this city. However, if I move into this tile where I do want to settle it, this unit would almost certainly die and then get captured. Uh, so I want to keep my settler, so I'm going to have to settle a subpar city just to get it down on the ground. I think we'll be able to hold this off pretty well and be able to counterattack as long as I can keep my warriors and my scouts on al alive. I think Rome started this war with nearly 200 military strength, and I've already started to cripple them down to nothing. My god, just look how much damage they take. 55 damage on an unupgraded Hulche with no promotions attacking a warrior in ideal terrain with the deity combat strength bonus. 38 damage. That, that's a, I have crossbowmen in the ancient era. That's how strong the Civ is on the defense. There we have unlocked riding, which means we can start placing down our observatory soon. This might actually be the greediest game of Civ that I've ever played. And I'm still totally fine because I'm walking around with ancient era crossbowmen that are just going insane on the amount of damage they do to my opponents. It's not quite time to start building settlers, but I do have locations for at least two more cities, and there might be another city down here. I'm thinking I'll plant only three more cities, in, honest, in all honesty. And that'll be these three right here. And then maybe I'll take over Antium and keep it, because it's actually not in too bad of a position. If I were to set up something like an aqueduct here, pop a dam down on this tile, then from this city over here, I were to pop down another aqueduct on that tile. I could very easily pop down two really high adjacency industrial zones in these cities without any problems whatsoever and not at all impact the campus adjacency that I'll be getting from these plantations. Actually, this looks like an insane spot for a Mayan observatory because it's between two uh, between a plantation and two farm resources. So this might actually be the city that I plan to settle next. You know what I would really like? I would really like a button to just hide all pins temporarily. Because I like having the pins, but it can sometimes make it hard for me to see what I'm doing in terms of warfare, as well as hard for the viewer. But there is a chariot here. And by the way, this chariot is already dead, even if he doesn't know it. I'm going to step forward with this guy. Hit him once. Look at that. I'm going to do, on the first hit, 39 damage. How much do you think I'm going to do for the second hit? 51 damage. This guy died to three archer attacks on the same turn that I discovered that there was a chariot there. Oh my goodness, another settler. And a thousand year flood. Oh dear. <laughs> but there's irrigation, which is going to allow me to pick up this plantation here, which will of course give me a ton of error score because it's on a tile that just flooded. But not only that, I can go ahead and sell that sugar immediately over to Gilgamesh and see if I can pick up 8 gold per turn. How much raw gold would you give me? 160 gold versus 8 gold per turn. I give up 80 gold in the long run, but get 160 right now. I think I'm taking the 160 right now because I'll be able to do a lot more with that right now. With the unlocking of irrigation, it's time to head towards mining and bronze working. You'll notice I haven't actually picked a governor yet. That's because my plan is to appoint Magnus and chop out a ton of these resource tiles when the time comes. So I'm just going to grab Magnus, pop him into Copan, and then I'll eventually go ahead and get Pingala all the way up to Connoisseur and Researcher. Because I would like to try to build the Oracle in my capital this game. The Oracle, of course, gives you plus two great people points per district that you have in a city, and Pingala can double that with his grants promotion. So if I park him in my capital city, I should be able to earn an absurd number of great people points from a single city. But now that we have military tradition and early empire, it's time to head over for political philosophy. If I could steal this settler, that would be amazing. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to, and I'm pretty sure that Armad just declared war on me, which I really don't like. Oh my goodness, am, am I in a position to steal this settler this turn? Hold on. No, not quite able to steal it, but I am in a position to do some serious damage to their army once again. They have basically nothing left. I think it's about time that Antium met its maker, so I'm going to start hammering away at this city with the intent of destroying it. 
because I still do need to deal with any potential reinforcements coming from Rome. So I will have to focus on killing those chariots, because if that chariot gets into the city, then I'm in really bad shape. Right, so right before Rome actually takes my capital, let's go ahead and see if they would like a little bit of peace. What do you mean you're not willing to trade that? I'm beating you in the war. I've killed all your military. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, Rome basically has nothing left. So I could go on the offensive here and maybe blow up Kume, but I'm a little bit worried about their science per turn. They're likely to have legions around about now. So I think peace is probably the right option with Rome. Another thousand year flood, just adding more yields to tiles that I will eventually crush. But in the meantime, they do act very nicely. One thing I am a little bit worried about is the 59 signs per turn that Gilgamesh is making already. I really need to start my observatories. Speaking of which, let's buy the tile that we plan to build the observatory in our capital on. Go ahead and place that district down to lock in the low, low price of 48 production for a district. Ah, here comes Rome again, trying to recapture their lost city. I don't think it's going to work out for them, unfortunately, because I do have the garrison promotion, which allows me to do a stupid amount of damage in a single hit. Oof, I swear, like, I swear, a natural disaster is have happening every other turn in Apocalypse Mode. Like, you just look at this event history, and it's never ending. Like, literally, every two to three turns, there's some sort of flood, some sort of eruption, some sort of meteor strike, forest fire, whatever. There's political philosophy, and that's going to unlock my new government. I'm, of course, going to be taking autocracy this game for the simple reason uh, that I want the plus one to all yields for each government building and palace in the city in my capital so that I can squeeze a little bit more value out of my capital. I'm going to be taking out colonization now as well because I just finished my final settler. Instead, I'm going to be plugging in urban planning and ilkum because right now I need to get all my builders out because remember, I don't get housing from fresh water. The only way for me to get housing is from builders. Now, now that we've unlocked political philosophy as well as mysticism, we basically want to go straight to feudalism so that we can get those extra two build actions on our builders. We have relatively small cities right now, but we're going to be wanting to work a lot of tiles, which means we're going to need a lot of builders to improve this territory because builders are the main way that we get housing. Tikal has finished its very first builder. Let's go ahead and place the observatory, get these two plantations online so that we can rush all the way to a plus five or more adjacency observatory. Now, in the midst of getting my empire established, I've only just started my observatories and Sumeria is on 82 signs per turn. Good God, I have an uphill battle ahead of me. Plus four error score for getting our very first observatory is very very nice now this observatory isn't giving me a whole lot right now because i don't have enough you know stuff placed down beside it but that's totally fine we're not in a major rush i just want to get my government plaza placed and now i can start work on the oracle sorry sumeria i did settle a little bit close to you but i will take your 30 diplo favor and scythia's 30 diplo favor that i can go ahead and immediately sell to i don't know china who will give me a total of 20 gold per turn for 65 Diplo favor that I essentially got for being a jerk and forward settling two of my enemies. Just a casual 44 gold per turn on turn 65, thanks to that little move I pulled off. Building a single second farm in this city is going to jump us from four housing all the way to six. That is the true power of farms as the Maya. Build an observatory in five turns? How about instantly? immediately getting me a plus three adjacency observatory, which I'm going to need because Sumeria is already on 90 sides per turn. Damn, it looks like somebody built the Oracle, which is not the end of the world. I'm just going to crack out a quick builder with that spare production and then get to work on my government plaza. Thanks to all the farms that I built, I have the boost towards feudalism, which means we'll get it in record time. I could use a couple of extra monuments and a boost or two for Pingala, but I think we're making really, really good time. Even if other players are running away with the game, I think the Maya are so strong that we'll be able to catch up in the next 40 turns. What's that? A plus three adjacency observatory? No, no, no. I buy this tobacco tile that has been getting yields rained down upon it, and now I have a plus five adjacency observatory. That is just insane. It's ridiculous. And I'm not even doubling the adjacency bonus from that yet. Oh my god, there's just an archer over here sitting in the forest fire, getting roasted alive. Just makes me think of that meme of the dog in the house on fire. It's like, this is fine. <laughs> oh, I just bumped into candy, which means since they don't have a suzerain, I'm about to get another envoy. 
If when I finish defensive tactics, I come up here to my government and swap into Classical Republic and then plug in the Diplomatic League card, which allows my first envoy to count as two, I could get Suzerainty of Candy and potentially find another natural wonder and get a free relic. Considering I found two natural wonders over here on the east side of the map, there's a pretty good chance that there's going to be a natural wonder somewhere around here or potentially down here. I'm also going to go ahead and pick up the audience chamber, which is going to give me plus one amenity and plus three housing in all my cities with governors. And since I only have a handful of cities, I will be trying to get as many governors as possible situated in my empire to take advantage of all the farms that I'm building as well. With the completion of the granary in Yakib, I'm going to go ahead and try to build the pyramids. Um, once Magnus is established in here, I'm going to go ahead and chop this rainforest, put a mine here, and then chop this rainforest. And that should just about get the pyramids finished in about 15 turns. Chop in Yakub, take that from a 30 from a 32 turn build all the way down to a 22 turn build. That's 11 turns shaved off. If I put a mine here, that should speed it up another few turns and then chop here. That'll shave another five to eight turns off it. Oh dear, it looks like Rome has finally gotten tired of my crap. 16 turns, all the way down to 13 turns. That's the power of chopping out a little bit of jungle for food and production when you're going for something like the pyramids. Now with the advent of feudalism, we have one of our key policy cards that we're going to be running before we get to exploration. The other key one is the natural philosophy card that gives us 100% campus adjacency bonuses. Because if I go to my empire map mode, I already have pretty decent adjacency online. I could do some serious damage to them, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and retreat to a safe distance and let them come towards me. God, the pyramids were stolen. Oh well, it was a pretty late settle. It's not the end of the world. And I can just grab myself a quick water mill. Just finished the audience chamber. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in researcher here and watch my science jump a significant portion up to 47 science per turn. We are slowly catching up with Sumeria's ridiculous science gain. Also, for some reason, Poland won't take a friendship with me. Oh, now they will. I just don't understand. Listen, sometimes the AI is finicky and fickle. I have no idea what goes on inside their cyborg minds. The really nice thing about having a city strike and the Hulche is if I just take the Hulche, right, and I hover over this unit, I'm only going to do a 43 to 50 damage strike. But if I shoot with the city first, I'll slightly damage that unit and then be able to do a 48 to 49 damage strike, which is a lot more damage. I'm going to go ahead and pick up my alliances and then I'll head up for exploration for my tier two government. Beautiful. There's machinery, which should allow me to get my hands on crossbowmen. Unfortunately, they are a little bit expensive for me right now, but I can promote my units to do a little bit more damage. I think Rome has given up on trying to attack me because he has exactly 55 combat strength. I mean, he does have crossbowmen, which are like reasonably tough. But, I mean, even two of my Hulches just stepping out of my cities can basically cripple one of them in a single turn. Another governor title has fell into my lap. I'm going to go ahead and promote Pingala with the Grants promotion, giving me extra great people points in my capital. That's right, Rome. You have given up on your attack. I get to keep your city. Thank you for the 11 gold for, per turn for free. My favorite thing when I'm going for like a peaceful scientific game is when I see that I have friendships with everyone and I can pick and choose who I want to be like buddy buddy with like scientific alliance and stuff because it's just like oh which bonus do I want to get from trading with Sumeria I know I would like to get science from trading with Sumeria hi Sumeria would you like a research alliance oh thank you Sumeria I really appreciate you just unlock universities, which I'm going to try to rush in every city that I have a campus and a library already. Oh god, do you know what I completely forgot to do? I am a dumbass. I completely forgot to plug in my campus adjacency card. Good god, I was missing out on so much science there. Now the science game is starting to look a little bit more respectable. I am still bottom of the list because I was generating such little science for such a long time. Oh god, there is a fire. No, 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 I do not like it. Please do not spread. Please do not spread. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus Christ. Scythia, I need you to move this archer, please. Thank you. I can finally get out here to where I need to go. Aha, let's trade with Sipar for six gold and three science per turn. That is the power of alliances. They give you a stupid amount of science. Oh, Jesus Christ, the fire got worse. It got a lot worse. 
Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, God. Ooh, I mean, at least this piece of it burnt out, right? It's not all that. Everything is on fire. Everything is on fire. Oh, my God. This is, this is, let me just showcase the power of the adjacency bonus from plantations, right? On these observatories. I'm going to build this and you're going to see my science shoot up by nearly 12 science per turn from this one plantation adjacent to all these things. Look at this. Four adjacency campuses consistently as long as you have a plantation or two and room for farms here's a little trick i want to buy this forest tile in uxmal but it's three tiles away so i may as well just buy it in palanquy for a 50 percent discount and then quickly switch back to uxmal and swap it to it then quickly chop it to chop out this builder that i want and boom i basically just created resources out of thin air i just saved myself 50 gold on that tile purchase Let's pop another envoy into Bologna to get the plus two science from every science building us, netting us an extra 10 science per turn. Yeah, Gilgamesh isn't looking so hot with his 163 science anymore, is he? He is still, however, looking hot in the diplomacy screen. I mean, just look at those muscles. Oh, a military alliance with Genghis. Why, yes, please, Genghis. I'm allied with four out of the eight civilizations in this game, and I am one of the eight civilizations in this game. That means there's only three people who could potentially go to war with me, and two of them are my friends. It's literally only Rome who hates my guts. Also, I'm officially top science, by the way. Yeah, welcome welcome to the Mayan civilization. It's turn 113, and I'm making 144 science per turn. I don't have a single campus with less than four adjacency, excepting this one right here, which, you know, I will shortly be improving to at least three adjacency and then potentially four once I finish these two districts. One trick to do if you're not sure what tiles to improve in your city is just click on your city, see what tiles they're working and look for one that they're working that is unimproved and that you don't plan to put a district on. Right here, I plan to put a district on this, what is actually a really damn good tile, but I would rather have the commercial hub there because it works nicely in the little network of districts I have. So I identified this mine over here that I can go ahead and improve, and I would rather work that mine over this tile. I think a lot of people get into the habit of over or under improving their cities. Like here's a really under improved city. This city could definitely use like a, a string of farms around here, get these plantations online, maybe even this plantation. This plantation should definitely be online. Of course, of course the Thousand Year Flood. The Thousand Year Flood comes. One, I'm one turn from finishing the dam that stops this from happening and I get a massive... <sighs> okay, just remain calm, potato. Think about your happy place. It'll be fine. You're gonna be okay. At the very least, I guess the consolation prize is that we now have access to the Merchant Republic, a government type. That's going to give me plus 15% production towards districts, as well as a 10% gold boost in all cities with an established governor. Ooh, time to appease the gods again. I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I'm going to grab a couple of these sort of not necessary... Uh, units anymore because I can upgrade them into crossbowmen and feed them into this volcano. I might even feed my swordsmen. Probably feed like... Th uh, it depends on what the other guys do, but I I'm thinking I might feed up to four units into it. I was of course ravaged by a natural disaster, so I will add this proposal so that I can get all of my delicious monies. I'll put two votes into this just to help make sure it passes. I'm friendly with everyone on the map, so I'm pretty sure it'll pass regardless. And indeed, it looks like everyone voted this up, which is amazing, because that means they're all going to be trying to feed me gold over the next 30 turns, which means my gold per turn is going to skyrocket. Thank you so much for your gift, Poland. Thank you so much for your gift, Gilgamesh. Thank you so much for your gift, Scythia. And I just picked up an extra like 20 gold per turn just for spending a little bit of Diplo favor to get this aid request going. I literally just put farms here. What the hell, game? You immediately trigger a drought. I'm triggered. I'm super triggered. Ooh, we got a free niter over here. Very nice. Yes, well, I don't think the mines are that overpowered because I've managed to fall into a dark age. Regardless, I may as well just pick up reform the coinage to get a couple of extra era score points. It does feel an awful lot like a consolation prize. However, Isaac Newton does not because I'm going to instantaneously build a library and university, jumping my science up to nearly 200 per turn on turn 127. Remember, I think I had 9 signs per turn when Gilgamesh had 59 signs per turn. 
Oh, Gilgamesh has fed in quite a few more units than me. So I think, uh, man, I really want to upgrade these guys. I might have to trade for gold. I might have to sell off some stuff, get some more alliances and see if that's going to work out a little bit better for me. Just sold off a ton of resources to the AI, so I should be able to get my workshop and still upgrade a couple of crossbowmen without too much trouble, especially when I get diplomatic service and I'm able to plug in the card that makes it half price. Oh god, my recording failed. I had like a bunch of turns here that have just whoosh, disappeared. So I guess I'm going to give you an update. Um, we lost the Petra, we're working on building Kilwa. We have ridiculously overpowered industrial zones, thanks to all of the adjacency bonuses. This one is generating 12 production per turn, by the way. We have all of our dams and aqueducts online, outside a couple, like the one in my capital that I'm still building, and the one in Antium. We're making 222, we're making 228 signs per turn, Gilgamesh is on 171. We are just about to start burning fossil fuels to start flooding the world with CO2. And I've started to steal gold from India. Really sorry I lost that footage. Nothing I can do. You're just going to have to deal with it because there was some really good moments in there. And I just can't find them. They're gone. They just disappeared. Nothing I can do about it. And the reason I'm not going to go back and re-record them is because I've already done that twice. Because it's not the first time OBS has crashed on me and lost my footage. I'm having a really bad day recording this video. Please click the like button to make me feel better. Thank you for your contribution, Gilgamesh. It is appreciated. This is this is why I love the aid request. Look at all these numbers. This is all gold. That's what these numbers represent. This is gold I have received from the AI. I'm making 200 gold per turn and I'm not even trying. Anyway, there is scientific theory. Now we have to ask the question, do we want to build Oxford University? The answer to that question is, of course we do. <laughs> of course we want to build at Oxford University. And we're going to build it right over here in Copan. I might even go ahead and purchase up all the way to a coal power plant with any of my spare gold to make it go just that little bit quicker. Oh, and I won the Yeeting Units into Volcanoes emergency and managed to grab myself an extra charge on my soothsayers and a couple of extra points of faith per turn. Who is declaring warn me? Why are you declaring warn me? Rome! You're not... Oh, Rome, you might win. <laughs> oh, no. I thought we were friends, Rome, or at least I thought we were not completely and totally enemies. I guess I was wrong. Oh, God, I'm in trouble. I need to upgrade my units. There goes all of my gold. Honestly, I don't see the point in having units defending down here. Rome is the only person who's attacking me this game. And quite frankly, I'm done with Rome. I am done with Rome. We are killing Rome. That's it. I've made my decision. The apocalypse is coming for everyone, but the apocalypse is coming sooner for Rome. The good news is I was... Oh, Jesus Christ, what happened to my city? The tornadoes! No! <laughs> oh, God! I'm being attacked by Rome. There's tornadoes erupting inside my empire. This thing is just going to go and sweep through all of my campuses, isn't it? Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, I still have to deal with Rome, who I managed to distract by leaving a builder dangling out in front of them. So that's going pretty well for me. Oh, there's so many repairs to be done here. Oh, sweet Jesus. I just really hope this tornado goes to the east. Please go east. Please go east, tornado. No, look at them. Not, there's two sets of tornadoes sweeping through my territory. Oh, my God. For too long have the Romans threatened the Mayan Empire, and it is time for us to strike back. Take from the Romans what is rightfully ours, some goddamn peace of mind so they stop attacking me. If you want to do a little bit more damage to an enemy player, make sure you do a listening post inside their empire. That'll give you a little bit of extra diplomatic visibility, allowing me to do plus three extra damage. Or, well, it's not plus three extra damage, but it's plus three combat spent against them. It's not much, but every little bit of combat strength adds up in the end. The good news is Rome has actually built quite a few wonders for me to take advantage of, namely the Forbidden City and the Great Library. So I think killing them is more than justified based on not only what they have done, but the fact that they've built wonders that I want. Look at me justifying the invasion of another autonomous nation. Oh, just another day playing Civ.
Ooh, we just finished Kilwa Kisaniwa, and that is a really nice world wonder. Oh, and we unlocked rationalism. Time to get rid of... Man, I really want Trade Confederation for the culture. But it's only a little bit of culture right now, whereas rationalism... If I can get rationalism plugged in with, with natural philosophy, oh, my science is going to jump up to 240 per turn. The first city of Cume shall fall this turn. Rome, you were the architect of your own demise. I was just the instrument of the gods and the apocalypse. Capturing the Forbidden City did give me access to another wildcard card. Wildcard card? Listen, I have another policy card slot, all right? And I think I'm going to slap in Merchant Confederation. Oh, you know what, actually? I'm going to plug in Diplomatic League this turn, because I do have some envoys I want to spend, in particular with Buenos Aires. Because then I can start to work on chipping away and be ready to take suzerainty of them when Rome is out of the picture. No peace for you, Rome. You are going to die. I'm sorry. You've been around too long. You've been annoying me too much. Oh, my poor little scout. Oh my god, another tornado. Jesus. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and keep doing that mission. Can we also talk about the utter disrespect of this person building Petra and the pyramids right in front of the city that I was trying to build them in? This isn't even a good Petra. It's not even owned by the right city. This just, I'm so triggered. Why, what are you doing, Scythia? I need to take, I need to kill this city. What happened here? Oh my god, the damage to my empire. I need so many builders. Oh my god, I only just saw this now. The tornado completely demolished the entire southern half of my empire here. I, this game mode, I just, everywhere, I just, I keep having to rebuild builders. Everything has gone wrong. There's a volcano that's been erupting since turn one right here. The, the, the Phlegarian Fields or whatever it's called. The Phle Phle Phlegarian? Oh my god, how do you even say that? The AI, by the way, they must be doing a lot of aid requests because I have been just getting pumped full of gold by Scythia and Gilgamesh. Holy crap. God damn, I made a lot of gold out of this emergency. Got our very first source of coal. We can now start filling the atmosphere with CO2. This was our plan all along. No peace for you, Rome. I'm sorry. You have pissed me off too much this game. I feel like, does anyone else feel like when they play the game, they're really forgiving to the AI, but there's like a certain point the AI declares war on you, they denounce you, and it's just like, you know what? I don't care anymore. You're dying. I'm done. I'm, I'm yeeting you out of my game. Oh my god, the field cannons. For days, just field cannons upon field cannons upon field cannons and the bombards look at the bombards just ripping these cities to shreds city will not be able to hold out for very much longer under this kind of sustained pressure Ooh, my spy and pattern i got a level up i gotta go ahead and take ace driver so i can keep him alive a little bit longer i tried to be nice to you rome i really tried i really tried to be nice to you and all you gave me was grief in return and so now your empire will burn. Look at these pitiful, look at these pitiful knights, dude. I'm doing seven, I have 73 combat strength field cannons against their knights. Get out of here, encampment. All right, that's the encampment taken down. Rome shall soon follow. Ooh, actually, I got a couple of envoys out of this, which is kind of what I wanted, because I want suzerainty of Hong Kong and of Buenos Aires. I'd also like to get Bologna, but I'm not going to compete for that right now. I will, however, take Hong Kong under my wing because that's going to give me a 15% production boost in this city thanks to the Kilwa Kisaniwa. Oh, sorry, is it Kilwa Kisiwani? Just like my other city, Uxmal is basically complete. It has everything I need. It's just lacking amenities. And the amenities are actually starting to hurt quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get a theater square online to take care of that problem. Part of the problem is a bit of war weariness, but that shouldn't really be too much of an issue for the long term. Rome itself is next on the chopping block. So let's see if we can't get our bombards in position to start taking bites out of the city. God, I love just how much damage bombards do to cities. It just tears them asunder. Bye by capital of Rome. It should be a fairly straightforward endeavor to finish off this city with my cavalry. Yoink, my city. Thanks very much. We shall be keeping it. Oh, look, this is just disgusting. A plus 
10 production coal power plant. Really, tell me, tell me you're not planning your cities like this with aqueducts, with dams, with industrial zones. If you're not doing this, I think you're playing wrong. This is just an insane amount of production to have. Let's snipe Filippo Brunelleschi, and I'm going to use Faith to snipe him. He's going to be extremely helpful when I want to build the mausoleum in a single turn. There is refining. We now have access to oil and nationalism, so we can start combining our units together to make even stronger units. But the real power of oil is now I have access to flight, and I'll be able to get my hands on lovely biplanes and eventually bombers. Oh, and with the advent of a new era, the Mayan Empire enters into a golden age. Oh, a mega colossal eruption, owie. I think that damaged a couple of my districts, which... Yep, that definitely damaged a couple of my districts. Well, we'll have to prioritize those for repairs. There is flight, and we can... can and we can begin building an air force. I also need to grab myself steel, namely uh, for lumber mill improvements, but also so that I can start building artillery because I'm having a bit of trouble breaking Ostia. You have got to be kidding me. Did somebody just build the mausoleum? I only just placed it down. Oh my God, China. I just placed the mausoleum and was about to one turn build it with Filippo and they stole it. You know who else is dying? China's dying. I'm sorry, China. I, I need, I need your land. You've got oil. <laughs> You've got oil. <laughs> I need your oil, okay? I need it. I need to burn all the fossil fuels. Bye-bye, city of Ostia. We hardly knew you. I took over a couple of very nice things. Unfortunately, this campus isn't very good for me because I'm playing as the Maya, but it is what it is. The very nice thing, though, is Charles Darwin is ready to research me steel and get me on the way to chemistry for research labs. Oh yes, here's the world's first artillery ready to fight with its 90 bombard strength. I think it's about time that I took suzerainty of Buenos Aires and got my delicious 15% production across my entire empire from the Kilwa Kisaniwi. Kisani? Kis Kisawani? I have never, I have no idea how to pronounce this. I, <laughs> I suck at pronunciation, okay? Oxford University giving me a lovely 20% boost to my science and two free technologies, sanitation, as well as combustion. Beautiful. I can now get heavy. I can now get tanks. And uh, I'm kind of feeling like this might be a little bit of a nuclear game as well. We are trying to bring about the apocalypse. And what is more apocalyptical? Apocalyptical? Apoc apocalyptic? Apoc apocalypsy? What is more apocalypsy <laughs> than nuclear bombs, okay? Can I just say, I really like the way the corn looks in the game. I really love this addition. I haven't seen any honey. I know it's in the game, but I haven't seen it anywhere. Ooh, there's replaceable parts, giving us plus one food adjacency to everywhere. Giving us plus one food adjacency to all of our farms and extra production from our pastures. I really like that tech, especially because it's gonna line up pretty well with our urbanization research. Oh my God, I just two shot Ravenna with an artillery and a field cannon. Oh my goodness, give me this city. Yoink. Rome is down to his final city and he's even losing it due to loyalty. <laughs> How the turntables, Rome. How the turntables. Time to denounce China for their crimes against my empire by building the mausoleum on the turn that I was about to immediately build it. Also building the Huey on me. Taking suzerainty of Buenos Aires gave me access to another source of coal, so it's time to start burning more power by getting some research labs online, and they will be producing me 16 signs each. I think I'm actually gonna peace out Rome because their city's gonna flip independent. So if I peace them out, they'll flip independent. I don't generate grievances against every other player in the game. And I get to take everything they have anyway. Seems like a fair deal. And then I can just prepare for war with China. Who I'm currently denouncing. And I will be able to declare a golden age war against them for a 75% reduction in grievances generated against them. Oh, a meteor shower right by me. You know what that means? Well, it means if I can get my tank over here to pick that up, I'll get another free tank. Oh, stock exchanges use power as well. Look at me burning coal faster than I can make it. Let's go ahead and declare that Golden Age War on China at a long last. Oh, we have our very first biplane, yes. 
Doesn't mean we're going to start using a lot of oil, but that's the goal, all right? We're trying to use as much oil as possible. Let's see if we can't get them up over here. Also, I need to get a scout unit to check up here because there's sometimes little chunks of strategic resources hidden up in these areas. So I'll grab myself a ranger and get him to look around up here. Might be worth pushing a settler up there. Pick up the meteor site. Boom. Free tank. Now that thing is going to start using coal or oil rather. So that's going to be a bit of a problem. So I'll need to combine them or I'll be running out of oil very quickly. Rome died of natural causes thanks to loyalty pressure. So I take none of the blame for that. And the city will flip to me in 11 turns, but I could probably kill it faster if I do it manually. This is why I love the observation balloon. I can't quite hit the city. Pop the balloon on top of the tile. Now I can hit the city. Thanks for the free city. Yoink. <laughs> and I take none of the grievances. I could even liberate them for 300 Diplo favor. I could liberate Rome. Truly the greatest humiliation ever. Give me your grievances. I have liberated you. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have liberated them. Now I have 500 Diplo favor. Hey, Samaria, you like Diplo favor, don't you? How would you like 500 Diplo favor? Oh, you would really like 500 Diplo favor. Oh, there is oil up here. I need a settler. Did I mention that biplanes are kind of insane? Look at this. I can just kill any of these units. See ya. Bye. Oh my god, the amount of damage my units pump out. It's just silly. Don't watch the oh hey, I grabbed the Big Ben. I forgot I was building this. But now I've got a 50% increased treasury, which I wasn't really saving up much money, but I guess I have 4,000 money now. And I guess I have another slot for an economic policy card. No, Caravel, don't you dare. Don't you dare pillage my harbor. I swear to god. Guanju, see you later let us keep that city wait what do you mean i betrayed him there's no way i betrayed him get out of here with this betrayal nonsense it was a fantastic oh looks like people have declared war on me Ugh. well at least i have the rear valley let's have a look here target genghis khan was ravaged okay that one seems fine let's see betrayal emergency who am i at war with oh sweet baby jesus christ i am at war with everyone this is necessary in order for the apocalypse to happen this is necessary this is, in fact, mandatory and was going to happen all along. I'm just glad that I have Scythia on my side. Scythia, did you join me in my defense? It's going to be a long night. This is going to be... I've been playing this game all day. This is going to be a long night. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Well, I mean, I guess I was going to have to go to war with everyone eventually so that I can, you know, cause the apocalypse. <sighs> I just... I, I was hoping that I would have a bit more time. I hate you, Caraval. I hate you. I hate you for everything that you stand for. Why would you do this to me? Why? Oh, my God. And eruptions? I don't need this in my life. Oh, this city is going to fall uh, in extremely quickly. In fact, the city has already fallen. Thanks for the free city. This is what I love about biplanes and artillery working together. The biplane spots for the artillery, the artillery blasts the city asunder. And then you add in a little bit of a supply convoy so your artillery are highly mobile, and they can move and shoot even without the assistance of a great general. I mean, in fairness, the war with China is already a breeze with how quickly I can rip these cities down thanks to this extremely overpowered artillery. Next strategic resource unlock, uranium. Might be a good idea to get some oil power plants because we're running out of coal. It appears the world doesn't really approve of me yeeting other saves off the face of the earth and polluting the atmosphere with carbon. Speaking of which, we're only nine turns away from the first sea level rise. I just want to point out that Copan has 102 production. I think I need to grab myself a couple more hills if I can. Ooh, I found even more aluminium. Oh my God, I'm going to have so many bombers. <laughs> oh God. Oh god, the world is over. It's over for you guys. Oh, thank you for the free city. I'm just taking city after city. Only a couple of turns required. Mm -mm -mm. Again, why I love observation balloons. I can just shoot over the mountain and hit the city. Combined arms. We have discovered uranium. We're already getting six uranium per turn. Oh, I didn't even realize there was an appease the god. <laughs> competition going on oops i could have been yeeting units into this volcano all day long oh uranium uranium i already have improved uranium and i settled on uranium oh my goodness 
Well, you know what comes next. First, we got to get a little bit of oil power because uh, we got a we got a bit of a problem. And uh, I wouldn't mind getting a couple of nuclear power plants in particular so I can get some nuclear devices. Oh, yes. I got a military engineer to start building railroads. Um, I'm kind of out of coal. <laughs> God, do I need coal. I need so much coal. Oh, there's coal over here in Guangzhou. I need a builder. Oh, do I spend my precious gold getting a builder to improve that coal? Of course I do. That's not even a question. I need to burn more. More oil. Feed me the oil that I need. The other thing that I really love about the observation balloon is that even though this guy can't shoot this turn, I'll be able to shoot with this artillery, which normally wouldn't be able to reach the city, move the balloon over to this one, shoot the city over the mountain anyway, and then capture it with my cavalry. Boom. Thanks very much. And I got a free settler out of this. Oh my god. I feel like... I. This feels like cheating. This feels like cheating. Oh, China's empire is in shambles from my onslaught and some disasters seem to have struck as well. And that disaster comes in the form of Scythia because she's been running around pillaging all their tiles. Oh, give me the oil from the frozen north. Oh yes, the first bomber. The first bomber. Oh, look at how much damage they do to cities. Kabam. 93 defense damage in a single hit. Oh, it's glorious. It's beautiful. And I have so much aluminium. I can continuously produce bombers for the next, like, 30 turns. This is going to sound like a strange thought, but I feel like the correct, like, past tense pronunciation of yeeted should be yate. Like, he was yate off the face of the earth. I don't know. This is just, like, kind of a shower thought that's come to me as I murder China. Oh, another city falls. Thank you very much. And the great thing is the encampment is like immediately ready to turn on their <laughs> their former allies and just kill all their units. Oh, God. It is deliciously overpowered. More coal at long last. More coal. Hopefully I'll be able to actually start building railroads soon. Because I just have a great... I have an engineer just sitting here doing nothing. Brilliant. I actually have access to oil power plants. And it might be worth my while having a look around for maybe a kind of weaker industrial zone. That I could maybe sw switch in an oil power plant. I might even put one in my capital. Because this is the one that's taking the brunt of the workload in terms of coal consumption. Now it is a significant step down in terms of productivity. But I think it evens out in the long run. So I'm going to convert to oil power here just to try to ease up my consumption of coal so I can start burning more oil. Changsha is getting two shot. Oh my goodness. Never mind, it's actually getting one shot. See you later, Changsha. <laughs> just free cities. Just free cities. It's free real estate. Wait, I can canal into Lake Retba? Why would you ever want to do this? I mean, okay, sure. Let's canal into Lake Retba. Sure, why not? Adios, Isik. Oh my god, look at this damage. Oh, tons of damage. Tons of damage. Oh, I could liberate this to Scythia. I'm going to keep it. Oh, I got more coal. I need a builder over here. Yes, more coal, more coal. Love coal, because I want to burn it. I want it to go up into the atmosphere. <gasps> we reached the next stage of climate change. Oh my goodness, look how much CO2 I've emitted in such a short amount of time. Even more oil to add to my collection. <laughs> Why would I ever give you peace, China? You've been a thorn in my side the entire game. Well, that's not exactly true. Oh sweet Jesus, Long Shi fell in a single turn. I'm unstoppable. There's nothing they can do. I cannot be stopped. There is literally nothing they can do to me. <gasps> I finally have a surplus of coal. I can start building railroads. I will put one charge into this canal to get it done a little bit quicker, though. Hunza. Oh, Hunza. <laughs> oh, Hunza. Where did you go? I'm so sorry. I am so sorry, Hunza. Bye-bye, China. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Oh, I could liberate this, actually. You know what? I'm going to liberate Hunza. Yeah. I want to have a city-state on my side. They'll give me extra gold to my trade routes, which is deliciously handy. 25 turns until the next sea level rise. That will not do. We must generate more CO2. Oh my god, bad Tibera just got demolished by my two bombers. Oh, it's so easy. <laughs> it's so easy to just conquer cities at will now. Like, 
I'm not even sure if I'm going to try to <laughs> try to cause the apocalypse at this point. I'm just having too much fun conquering everything. Oh yes, the Manhattan Project. It has begun 11 turns until we can start creating nuclear bombs. Well, with the conquest of China, it's time to start redirecting my entire army all the way over to Sumeria. They also have resources that I need to burn up into the atmosphere. <laughs> the unfortunate thing, though, is some of my coastline is starting to flood. It's not going to be the end of the world, but some of these tiles are definitely going to be going bye-bye. And I have no intention. <laughs> I have no intention of getting flood barriers this game. I mean, I guess I could stop off and pick them up. Yeah, maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's worth it. Just casually improving uranium inside my city-state's borders. Thank you, Hansa, for your contribution to my uranium stockpile. <laughs> Why is there a war cart? <laughs> Why is there a war cart being bombed by a bomber? I don't understand. I don't understand in the slightest. I guess I don't have to understand if I'm just killing everything I touch. Another golden age. And I think I'm going to go ahead and take Heartbeat of Steam here. I really like that production from Campus Adjacency. Really feels nice to me. And so falls the city of Sipar. Get my helicopter to sweep in and yoink. The city belongs to me. Of course we will be keeping it. Progress is coming along nicely. We're into phase three of climate change and phase four will be here in eight turns. Oh my goodness. We have burnt so much CO2 and we're going to be burning even more. Ooh, we just unlocked drones, yes. Now our bombard units will have not only extra range, but they'll do more damage. Oh, yes. Also, did I forget to mention that these Soothsayer units actually give your units a combat bonus? You can see it down there in the bottom right. Right there, plus five combat strength from the Soothsayer. These actually act a little bit like great generals. I think this is going to make faith generation early game because they're actually fairly cheap. I think they're a hundred... Faith and then plus 100 for every one you've purchased, but I feel like they really I feel like the apocalypse mode Changes the game enough to keep it interesting if you've been kind of bored of Civ, I would definitely recommend Giving the all apocalypse a whirl. It doesn't it, I don't think it like completely overhauls the game But it just adds a lot of interest. There's a lot more Stuff going on. I don't think we've seen any of the really spooky stuff like solar flares and stuff like that But it can definitely happen I've also not been fortunate enough to not get struck by any like turbo meteors Although I expect those meteors are coming. My god. Where the hell did you get a helicopter from? Relax, Isen, okay? <laughs> this is a friendly game. Ooh, the Haboob dust storm Good grief. It just annihilated this city. I swear to god if this like sweeps to the east I'm gonna be turbo mad Oh, just a casual turn 216, you know, jet bomber <laughs> coming in with 120 bombard strength, able to knock down a third of a city's health and fortification in a single turn. Oh my god, they do so much damage to cities. Holy crap. I just took Uruk in, in like a couple turns using these jet bombers. How's the old climate change coming? Four turns until stage four. Once we get to the final stage. Oh, are we in for a juicy surprise? Oh, we have finished the Manhattan Project. Hmm. I'm going to cut. If I want to do nuclear war, I'm going to need giant death robots. Well, there's no harm in starting the construction of nuclear devices, I guess. Well, <laughs> that might be a bit of a... <laughs> <laughs> that might be a bit of a, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's a phrase that I've ever said out loud. There's no harm in just building nukes. <laughs> I think there's like an implicit harm <laughs> to my enemies. Oh my god, I haven't been paying attention to the volcano yields. But good god, I feel like every single volcano on the map has just been erupting continuously. Producing insane yields around all of them. Look at this. Look at this. Look at, look at these yields. Oh, it's time for rocket artillery. This is one of my favorite units. Goes from 97 combat strength all the way up to 112. Stage four, climate change. Stage five is in nine turns. I am burning an insane amount of fossil fuels right now. I don't think I've ever made a go this quickly, ever. And I still have surplus to burn. Beautiful. We have just unlocked totalitarianism, which is going to give us plus five combat strength on all of our units, minus 15% war weariness, and a 50% production boost towards all of our units. We also get the third alternative, giving us two culture and gold from each research lab, military academy, coal power plant, and every power plant. That is going to be extremely helpful.
and martial law will reduce the war weariness that we're taking. And we are taking a lot of war weariness. Shall pop in third alternative as well as martial law. That's a total of a 65% reduction in war weariness, actually. Another city crumbles beneath the blades of my helicopter horse? I was going to say hooves, but they're not horsemen anymore. And I guess we're taking Hammy as well. Thank you very much for the free city. Look at the range on this artillery. I'm shooting it from all the way over here. And then I just bomb it, and then I can just swing in with a tank. I just want to point out, I took Hammy last turn. And I took Korala this turn. I think it would be a good idea to get Sue's Ranity of Cahokia as well, because that should jump my gold production up a massive amount, thanks to the Kilwa Kisawani. Ah, I finally built that canal over in Guangzhou to, to Lake Retba. Uh, not that that's extremely useful or anything. But, you know, you build one canal. I kind of feel like you have to build another to be able to get out through the lake into the water. Oh, we got our first nuclear device. Oh, yes. Should I drop it now? No, 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 no. Let's let's hold off. We could, we could take this city the traditional route with just bombing runs. Bye-bye, Nippur. Can I capture the city this turn? Not quite. Maybe if I used both of these units. Hmm. I don't know. I have another jet bomber. That'll do the trick. See you later, Nippur. And yoink! My city. Oh my god, I'm nearly one-shotting this city now that I have fascism. Oh my sweet Jesus Christ. I'm barely having time to actually establish my governors before I'm flipping another city to my side. Oh my sweet Jesus. The damage that these units do. It's ridiculous. I think Sumeria, I think Sumeria has overstayed their welcome. I think they've overstayed their welcome and need to be gone. I'm actually kind of hoping that Scythia kills them because then they'll take all the grievance penalties with the other civs. Oh no, we're up to stage five of climate change and six turns until stage six. I'm not even sure if I can actually win the game before the entire world is destroyed by comet strikes. Well, I guess Scythia didn't want to take the city, so I'll take it and take all the grievance penalties. Bye bye, Sumeria. It was nice playing with you. I've been playing this game for like eight hours straight, <laughs> Tr trying, to, tr trying to get a video out. <laughs> Don't do what I do, okay? I do this for you guys. This is <laughs> this is what I do for you. I play Civ for insane numbers of hours just to entertain you. Speaking of which, if you want to support my unhealthy lifestyle choices, <laughs> go ahead and become a member of the channel. There's a little button down by the subscribe button that you can click on and give me $1.99 a month and you can get special privileges, like a little thingy beside your name that says, you give me money. If that doesn't sound like a good deal, you may as well click subscribe and hit the bell icon instead. And don't forget to leave a like on the video. That was my call to action on autopilot. I hope you guys enjoyed it because my brain is starting to turn to mush from playing this game so much. Five turns until the giant death robot activates. Wait, where did this battleship come from? <laughs> Why is it here? Get out of here, battleship. You go home, you're drunk. Oh, uh, I'm running out. I'm running out of patience. Let's just nuke him. Come on. Let's just nuke him. Kind of wish the Mountain King was playing right now as my plane drops this nuke. Mmm, look at that. Oh, that's nice. That's real nice. Still need to actually capture that city though. I'll grab it next turn with this modern armor core. And another one bites the dust. And another one's gone. And another one's gone. Another one bites the dust. Ugh, I don't feel like trying to wait for the city to go independent. I'm just gonna nuke it. Kaboom! Bye bye! Very nice. Very, very nice. It's probably about time I got my hands on a spaceport, because I do actually want to eventually win this game somehow. <laughs> before the entire world succumbs to the apocalypse. I was a little bit having a little bit too much fun killing people, and I need to be also be careful, because if I kill everyone, uh, I think Tamiris might convert me and uh, just win the game by default. Gdansk, Gdansk Revolution has fallen beneath the hooves of my modern armor. Oh, another range on my rocket artillery. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, yes. Giant death robots activated. Get me some of those. 16 turns? No, 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 no. I need 6,000 gold to buy one of these bad boys. Hey, Scythia, 
Do you want some? Do you want some resources? I have all this stuff I can give you. My only trade partner in the world will give me 72 gold per turn for all of this stuff. I'll take that deal. Well, there goes Calcutta. Sorry, Calcutta. I need to take over choir as well. Yoink. Thank you very much. Oh, Jesus Christ. We are six turns away from the apocalypse. All right, I think I've done enough conquest and it's time to peace everyone out. Take all of their money, and I mean all of their money, especially all of Genghis's money. Cause I'm gonna need some spaceports to win this game, and uh, I don't think I have enough time to actually build them <laughs> before all my cities get nuked from orbit. Well, there's nuclear fusion. I don't know if I'm actually gonna build any thermonuclear devices. I think I've proved the point though that the Mayans are insane for rushing to late game war strategies. But the real reason I made this video was to try to bring about the apocalypse and still win. Oh dear. Oh dear. There's rapid deployment, but most importantly, we have reached the final phase of climate change. There is a 0% chance for any of these things to happen, but I'm pretty sure there is a 100% chance that next turn, comets are going to start raining from the sky. <laughs> oh God. Oh sweet Jesus Christ. Oh my God. It, the city is gone. The city is gone. Oh no. <laughs> oh, 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 there's just a crater. <laughs> there's just a crater. Oh God. <laughs> what have I done? I don't think I have enough time to actually win the game. I need to start building spaceports immediately. Moksha was just yeeted out of that city. May as well put him into Gdansk. Just try to buy myself some time. Okay, there wasn't a comet strike this turn. Whew. Whew. Appease the gods. Uh, you bet your ass I'm going to be appeasing the gods with as many units as I can find to feed into a volcano. Ooh, mega colossal eruption. That just damaged five tiles. Rapa Nui is in bad shape. Oh no. Okay, that's not on the city at least. That's like... That's pretty okay. Four fertilized tiles, four population lost. Ooh, that tile is gone. It's not just that tile. Those tiles are gone. Oh my God. What did I even have there? I must appease the gods. I must appease the gods where, <laughs> get over here, feed them, sacrifice the unit, get into that volcano, lads. Ooh, start launching the earth satellite. Wait a minute. <gasps> There's just a crater. Are they going to drop, like, every turn or two? Oh my god. I love this. This is amazing. This is exactly the kind of thing that the late game needed. Cities just getting yeeted out of existence by a giant comet. Into the volcano, lads! We must appease the gods, lest more comets fall upon us. Everybody get into the volcano! Oh, there used to be a city here. There's not anymore. This is fantastic. I okay. This was well worth the eight hours I spent playing this game to get to the uh, to get to the the meteors destroying the world phase. Get into my volcano. I think we've appeased the gods enough for now. Maybe I'll stuff one more guy in there. I love how thematic this is. Like we're racing to escape the earth with a science victory. We're feeding, <laughs> we're feeding our military into a volcano to appease the gods as comets rain down from the sky. Oh Jesus, ranchy! <laughs> India is getting systematically just obliterated off the face of the planet. Well, we did manage to launch the Earth satellite, so that's the first step. And escaping this goddamn planet and not getting obliterated by comets. Into the volcano. The Mayan army march. Oh, I got my very first honey resource. Lovely. Well, that I improved myself. Let's have a look at these tile yields. Oh my god. Five food, one production, four gold. Honey is so nice. And I really like the look of the tile too. I can get those builders off and get a better look. I don't think we got a comet this turn, which I'm pretty happy about. Unless I just missed it. Ooh, India. <laughs> That's really bad.
Oh no, that looks like one of my good cities. Ooh. Four tiles obliterated. Ooh, oh, that hurts. That really hurts. Although, thankfully, it didn't actually hit a city center, so it's not that bad. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> oh, it's bad. <laughs> I got my first great rider. That's a consolation prize, right? Good God, finish this pro project immediately. Ooh, okay, Plock got hit by a comet this turn. The world, oh no. Okay, that's a lake. That's not a, it looked like a crater. Okay, that's just a lake. That's fine. Oh no. No, no, not the chocolate hills. <laughs> not the chocolate hills. Oh Jesus. What happened to the chocolate hills? It just, if you destroy one of the tiles of a natural wonder, it just yeets them all. This is now just grassland with chocolate hills like flavor. <laughs> oh God. Oh, there's the moon landing. Perfect. We also have to go ahead and send a Mars colony. I'm going to grab communism too, because it kind of works a little bit better for a space victory. Let's grab International Space Agency over gunboat diplomacy. We need to plug in collectivization, e-commerce. That's going to give us plus four production on our internal trade routes. And we'll use crypt cryptography here as well to defend our spaceports with our spies. Speaking of which, I also need to promote Reyna. I need to get her up to the contractor promotion so I can actually purchase this spaceport five turns sooner. If Takal gets hit by a comet, I'm probably just going to rage quit. <laughs> no, oh god, I thought it was going to kill the Colosseum for a second. It is going to hurt, but it's not that bad. It's, it's, it's just okay. Nice comet strike, I mean... It, has a nice effect. Beijing is just under assault from comets right now. I'm kind of glad I get to keep the Colosseum though, because it kind of looks nice. I have 19 envoys. I should probably do something with them. I'm gonna take over Cahokia, get a huge boost to my gold income, and uh, probably a good idea to take over Bologna as well. And sure, why won't I take Antioch as well? Just take all the Sue's vanity, get my science up to a ridiculous number, a thousand science per turn. Just a casual, just a casual. 1,000 science per turn. By the way, the city of Tikal is making 150 production per turn. 58 of that from trade routes. I don't remember capturing this city. Oh, I settled this city. Oh god, it's just flooded so much I didn't recognize it anymore. Uh, I think there used to be a city here. Yeah, I think there... Pretty sure there was a city here at one point, but it's gone now. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. No, no, that's a, that's a Scythian city. Thank goodness for that. That's where the Oracle is. I'm kind of... You know what? I'm glad they lost that city. They stole the Oracle on me. Um, but, uh, the map is starting to get a little bit empty. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mars Colony launch. And now we can start the actual process of getting the hell off this planet that we destroyed. So apparently when the Chocolate Hills disappears, you can just start improving it. Interesting. Ooh, that's a little bit close for comfort. I don't like that one bit. Ooh, okay, okay. Over here in Bologna. Just on the edge of my empire. Nothing, nothing too bad. We have appeased the gods, so hopefully that'll mean it's less likely for it to land on me. Oh no, that one sounds close. Ooh, okay. Another one outside Bologna. Jesus. Bologna just can't catch a break right now. Yeah, let's go ahead and get Stephanie Quallack. I'm going to spend the 9,000 faith on that one. Reina is established in Copan. Let's go ahead and purchase our spaceport. And then we'll be able to build more of these Lagrange laser stations. It really does feel like a race against the clock, man, because <laughs> at any minute, a meteor could come down and just destroy all of my spaceports. All right, we appeased the gods, we got a free soothsayer, and our soothsayer's got another promotion. Stephanie Qualak. That should double the production rate towards the exoplanet expedition. And we should finish it next turn, just in time to unlock the repeatable projects. And so far, I'm kind of feeling like I will win this race. Why did I have to say that? I just know for a fact that next turn I'm going to be struck by the meteor. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. 100% chance of meteor right here, somewhere in the middle of my empire. All right, exoplanet expedition launched. All right, we're leaving the planet. Beautiful. Let's see, comet strike over here. <laughs> there goes another city. Bye-bye. Let us immediately begin launching Lagrange laser stations as quickly as humanly possible. Another city has rebelled on me, although there's not really a whole lot that I can do about that right now. Wait, I don't remember this meteor strike. That one was very close for comfort. 
to. Is global warming mitigation? Maybe I should have thought about that. <laughs> Maybe I should have thought about that a little bit before I decided to cause the apocalypse. Uh, I think it's a little bit too late for global warming uh, mitigation. All right, there's a Lagrange laser station and another Lagrange laser station currently traveling at three light years per turn. We need to up those numbers. Those are rookie numbers. I'm purchasing a builder in this city every turn because the number of build charges that you have actually does matter. Gives you a slight boost. Oh, Uxmal now is getting in on the Lagrange laser station shenanigans. Oh, I don't like how quiet it went. I don't like how quiet the game got. Okay, no, no, no. It was just down here that got meteor strength. That's fine. No, that's great. I'm totally fine. We're not fine. We're all gonna die. Oh God. <laughs> Get me off this planet. Casual mega colossal eruption. Launching Lagrange laser station. Two of them this turn. No meteor strike. That's good. That's good. That's really good. No meteor strike. I'm happy about that. And another Lagrange laser station. Currently traveling at six light years per turn. 50, 43 left to go. Oh no. Oh, thank goodness. It's it's the Pyramid of Petra City. This is, look, I just caused the apocalypse and I'm getting vengeance on all the cities that built the wonders that I wanted. Look, at it's amazing. It's perfect. It, it's all coming together exactly as I planned. I would kind of like to, to not be getting struck by meteors right now though that would be um that would be great the thing i'm starting to get worried about is there's starting to be a lot of holes in the map where meteors are striking and so uh i guess the more places that get struck the higher percentage chance is that one of my important cities gets hit oh dear there goes one of um one of the city states just uh buenos aires it's the bugs the bugs did this would you like to know more uh-oh that doesn't look like a good one. Whew. Managed to escape just barely there. And we launched a bunch of uh, stations. Currently traveling at like 12 light years per second. Or per turn. Per second? Jesus. <laughs> We're talking about warp speed there. Okay, there goes a city state. Hunza just got hit pretty damn hard. And there we have it. We managed to escape the planet, cause the apocalypse, make the Mayan predictions about the end of the world come true, and then just leave the planet, leave everyone else to die. We escaped. We're going to be fine. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It was my pleasure to make it for you. Let's take a quick look at the graphs. Look at the buildings constructed on me. Holy crap. I also, one of my favorite ones is to show you the science per turn. A lot of people panic about being behind in science, but this sieve is so good at science. It's ridiculous. This is like Korea levels of science with the ability to turtle like crazy. Also, I like seeing the gold graph because it's like at certain points, it's just like, whoa. And then it's like, oh, I need to spend my gold. It's like, <laughs> you could tell when I forget to spend my gold because the number just keeps going up almost exponentially. Anyway, that is it. Let's go ahead and watch the final comet strike it looks like it hit over here in india i'm gonna call that the end of the video i love you all very much and i'll see you next time bye bye i'm just kidding of course i'm not gonna leave i haven't nuked my own empire yet so long suckers